Okay, this is the second part of the 11-1 notes uh, for geometry. In two dimensions, Euler's formula reduces to F plus V equals E plus 1. That's faces plus vertices equals edges plus 1, where F is the number of regions uh, formed by V vertices linked by E segments. So now keep in mind, it's no longer faces, vertices, and edges, but you can think about it that way. It's just they're laid out on a flat surface. So verifying Euler's formula in 2D. Now remember, in 2D nets, this is a 2D net. Okay, how can you verify Euler's formula for a net for the solid in problem two? Here, and this is my problem two. Um, we're going to use these for variables. We got F for faces in 3D, V for vertices, and E for edges. But in 2D, we get we're talking about our regions and vertices and segments. So let's let's count them up. Let's check them out. Remember, there's going to be a lot of um, symmetry here. So if I go for faces. Okay, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm going to have eight faces. And then if I'm talking about vertices, okay, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So there's going to be 22 because there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven more. So my vertices will be 22. Now, my edges, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven going across that middle, but now keep in mind, the top and the bottom, so there's seven in the middle. I'm just going to keep that in the side. The top and the bottom are going to be the same, so I just got to count one of them, and then I'll get them both. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's 22 plus seven. And that'll be 29. Okay, so I've got those numbers from my regions, my vertices, and my segments. And now I pop that in here. I've got my 8, my 22, and 29. And I'm going to add those together, and I get that they're 30. So I've checked it, and I've verified that Euler's formula for 2D nets, or two dimensions, uh, works. Now, how are we going to use this? Now, we're going to use the, right, the solid at the right. How can we verify Euler's formula for faces plus vertices equals edges plus 2? Now, remember, this is the 3D version. This is 3D. Okay, so I've got this solid, and I've got my faces and vertices, and I'm going to go looking for faces and vertices here. So I've got that going on. <coughs> so my faces. Because it's a four-sided figure, I'm going to have uh, four surfaces going around, wrapping the four sides of this base. So I've got this base. I've got the four vertices going around here, okay, you know, four. And I've got the two bases. So I'm going to have, um, as far as bases are concerned, I'm going to have six. Now, my vertices, it's, and remember, it's about my symmetries. My vertices, i got four here, and I've got four more on the back side here. If I get these things uh, grouped, I'm going to group that so you guys can see this. So i got four more on the back side here that are the same. So i got four there, I've got four here, so I'm going to have eight vertices. Okay, my edges. Now, I'm going to have four edges here, and I have four more back here, and then I have four that connect them. So I'm going to have 12. So now since we're verifying Euler's formula for 3D shapes, that's faces plus vertices equals edges plus 2, we pop those in, and we have my faces, my vertices, my edges, and I pop in my numbers. I've got 6, 8, 12, and 2. And I'm going to add them together, and they're going to be 14, 14. So I've checked them out, and I'm all good. Now I'm going to draw the net for the um, solid. Now keep in mind when I'm drawing this net, I draw the inside like it's I'm unrolling the sleeping bag, the, the, the stuff that's going around the bases, and then I draw on the bases. So that's, that's what I'm looking at. 
So I've got this, this shape, this rectangular shape, segmented up into four um, quadrants because that's going to cover my base in the four quadrants. This one to this one, this one to this one, this one to this one, okay? And consequently, this is the same measures, okay? So you get an idea where everything's going one-to-one-ish. Okay, so now they want me to take this net and they're gonna, we're gonna verify the formula for 2D shapes. This is 2D, okay? This is 2D, Euler's for 2D, okay? So how can you verify Euler's formula faces plus vertices equals edges plus one for our two-dimensional net? Well, you gotta keep in mind we're looking at this and going, all right, so I'm looking at faces, faces, that's six, okay, vertices, again, we've got this vertex, vertex and whatever I'm counting across the top, I have on the bottom, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so there's 14 vertices. Remember, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So that's how I'm going to be able to notice those. And then I've got edges. And again, there's a symmetry in the edges and finding them. Okay, the top and the bottom edges are going to be the same. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there's 7 more on the bottom. Um, so that's 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So there's 19 more edges there. So you got 19. So faces, faces plus vertices equals edges plus one. Faces is six plus vertices is 14 equals 19 plus one. This is 20 is equal to 20 and I've got that made. Now, our next section is talking about cross sections. A cross section is the intersection of a solid and a plane. You can think of a cross section as a very thin slice of solid. Okay, so if I'm talking about a cross section, this is the intersection of this plane. Think about it as like a knife cutting through um, some clay or, you know, um, uh, some cheese. And so I've got this triangular prism shaped cheese and I slice it. What's the cross section? I mean, you can even think about it as stamping that cross section in ink and stamping it on the paper. What's it going to make? And that the shape it'll make in this particular case is a triangle. Okay. When I'm looking at that, that'll be a triangle. So I'm describing the cross section, the result. Okay. Of what happens when I kind of slice through it? Now, what is the cross section formed by the plane and the solid of each situation? Now, I find that it's easiest just to connect the things that are there, and you got to be thinking that there's something back here and it goes across. So this cross section is looking like it's going to be a rectangle. Okay, it's just kind of cylinders laying down. Okay, so I've got a rectangular cross section. Over here, if I take this cross section and, and uh, really think about what it's doing, that's another rectangle. Okay, when I go from the front bottom edge to the back top edge, that'll be a rectangle as well. <clears throat> now we got a couple here that I want you to try, or at least one that I want you to think about. You're looking at a truncated cone, okay? It's kind of an interesting shape, but I want you to think about what the horizontal plane would look like. And a horizontal plane is a plane that comes through like this, okay? So we're going to be looking at something like that, and if I tilt it up and look, actually look at it from the top instead of from the side the way we are, that would be a circle, okay? And then if I'm talking about a vertical plane, okay, I'm going to be looking at trimming this down here and down there, and we're not going to do it that way. If I'm talking about a vertical plane, let's go this way. So you can actually see my vertical plane in action. 
What type of shape is that? If I get that all together, if you remember from uh, this last chapter, we got ourselves a trapezoid going through there. Okay, so I've got a circle going through my horizontal and a trapezoid going through my vertical. Okay. <coughs> Now, to draw a cross-section, you can sometimes use the idea of, from postulates 1, 3, that the intersection of two planes is exactly one line. Drawing a cross-section. Now, the visualization, draw a cross-section formed by a vertical plane intersecting the front and right faces of the cube. What shape is the cross-section? So basically what you're going to do in step one of this, okay, you're going to visualize a vertical plane intersecting the vertical faces in parallel segments. So you got that. And really what you're going to do is you're going to t trim this. You're going to trim, you know, put a, uh, segments in here like that. Then this next one, you'll draw the parallel. We have that parallel segments. So that's the visual thing. But those, those parallel segments are really in the thing what we're doing. Okay, and we're going to finish that out there so it'll look like that. So generally, when you're doing it yourself, okay, you've got those parallel segments in. And then, you know, I filled it in and I covered it up so it would be easier to see what the actual shape was. And when they're talking about the shape, they're talking about that blue area. And I realize um, that you probably see the pieces of your cube coming up like that, but that part of the cube can be taken away, and we're going to group that so we can take it all the way together. That part of the cube can be taken away, so you can just see the actual shape that is made. So if I'm looking at that shape, my cross section is a rectangle. Okay, so keep that in mind. When we're doing this, I'm not interested in the shape with all the lines. I'm just interested in the, the flat shape that's the result. Now, with that said, draw a cross section from the horizontal plane intersecting the left and right faces of the cube. Remember, this is the left, this is the right, this is the left, okay? So intersecting the left and right faces of the cube. What shape is the cross section? So you think about that. So something draws cross section formed by a horizontal plane, horizontal plane intersecting the left and right shapes of the cube. Now, because it's horizontal, it should be parallel to the front face and back face. Okay, so it's looking like it's a square. And that's all I did. I just kind of drew, drew it in there, connected my stuff. I did my vertical lines, did my horizontal lines to connect the two endpoints of my verticals. So the, the cross section is a square. Now, you are studying polyhedrons in math class. Which figure does not belong in the diagram below? Well, you know, people win millions with that. It's got to be a great thinking song. So I'm thinking when we're talking about polyhedrons, they're polygons for sides and faces and bases, okay? So now, <clears throat> polygons have straight sides, they are not curved, and they have vertices, sides that connect to vertices, and then go on. And this particular fella right here is the outlier, or the one that does not belong in this group. They're all shapes, they all can be containers, but as far as polyhedrons, a collection of polygons, the cylinder does not fit the bill. Now, this last thing, Euler networks and circuits. These are just really fun when we're talking about Euler. 
Um, without lifting your pencil or pen, can you trace over the diagram without retracing its path? There is a um, rule that you can follow when you do this. Now, when I'm looking at this figure one, okay, and let's call this one figure two, this one's figure three, and I think I got a figure four down here. Okay, so we got these four figures. And first of all, I'll just give you an example of what's going on. If I start at a spot, can I, without lifting up my pencil, trace the entire thing? And is there a benefit to start at one spot or another? So I want you to think about it as you go. But if I'm looking this over, if I start at a spot, can I trace a figure? Oh, that one didn't work at all. Okay. And this here, this seems like it's going to go here, and I can trace that. So what's the benefit of starting one place over another? Some things just don't seem to work. So is there a benefit to start at one place or another? Okay. So we're looking at this next one in figure three. Okay. And if I start tracing, wow, I just, this doesn't seem like it's going to work. Okay, and if I start working over here, and if I start here, maybe something like this, and, and get those going, there's three that we are able to do so far. And hopefully you can find it too right now. And I got some people really trying hard. And here's the thing. I want to like you to come up with a hypothesis on where I'm starting, how I'm getting it done. Okay, you can even rerun the video up to this point just to see the ones I did and notice the one I couldn't do. Okay, because figure three, I can't do. See if you can come up with a hypothesis. And now I'm going to be honest with you. If I get rid of this in figure three, I totally can do it, okay? So that changes some stuff. That's just kind of very, very curious. Anyways, turn me off, play with it for a second, and then turn back on. Okay, so here it is. To be able to trace over this and this is great because it'll drive your siblings and nuts and, and your friends that aren't in geometry okay if you count up the nodes which is one two this is even one two three four that's even one two three four that's even one two three that's odd one two three that's odd if I start at an odd node I can trace the shape every time okay so using that idea this is even this is even this is even this is even excuse me not even this is odd and this is odd because that's three that's three that's two that's four it's two so i've got to start down here and then I can trace the system, okay? Now, what's curious is that I said on this one, we're looking at one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. These are all odd, okay? So far, I've been able to trace something when I've had two odds only, 
and now and then the rest were even and now this one's all odd and I can't trace okay and this last one one two this is uh, excuse me even and that's the things going into each each little dot this is even one two three four that's 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 even one two that's even Wow, I was able to trace it, and it was all even. So now, the, um, the rule. You can trace a figure without lifting your pencil. Without it, or uh, repeating segments if it has two odd and what they are the little dots are called nodes or no odd notes. In the summary, the objective, students will be able to recognize uh, polygon, polyhedra and their parts and to visualize cross sections of space figures. Write a couple sentences about something that you learned today about the learning objective, then rate yourself on a zero to four scale. Thanks for your time today. Have a great day.